Introduction to Neural Networks with C-Sharp, Class 3, Part 1. Welcome to Class 3. In this class session, there will be five parts. This is Part 1. We are going to discuss the Hopfield Neural Network. The Hopfield Neural Network is one of the most simple types of neural networks. That is why we are going to begin with it before we move on to other more complex types of neural networks. The Hopfield Neural Network consists of a single layer of fully connected neurons. That means that there is only one layer. This layer is going to form both the input and the output layers. As we learn about neural networks, we will see that they have input and output layers. Input layers basically give the neural network a range of numbers. The neural network processes these numbers in some way and passes them on to the output layer and you get another set of numbers, not necessarily the same, uh, the same quantity of numbers that you put in, out from the neural network. This is how the neural network makes decisions and conveys information to you. The Hopfield neural network that we will look at here, like all Hopfield neural networks, has only a single layer. So this single layer has to form both the input layer and the output layer for the Hopfield. There's also no hidden layers. Hidden layers are layers that occur between the input and output layers. There's generally just one, or one, two, or zero hidden layers on most neural networks. We will begin by examining the structure of the Hopfield neural network and look at basically how it is put together. Here you see a Hopfield neural network. It is made up of four neurons. These four neurons make up a layer. They're labeled N1, N2, N3, and N4. Layers in a Hopfield neural network are considered to be fully connected. That means that the neurons on each layer are connected to the other neurons on the same layer, but not to another layer. If they were connected only forward to another layer, that's called feed-forward neural networks, and we will see that in the next class session. You also see the weights drawn as lines. Each neuron has three connections to the other three neurons. However, the neurons do not connect to themselves. If the neurons connect to themselves, this is called a recurrent neural network. This course does not cover recurrent neural networks. We stick to fully connected and feed-forward neural networks. Here are the connections between the neurons expressed as a weight matrix. You see neuron 1, 2, 3, and 4 across the top, neuron 1, 2, 3, 4 across the rows as well. This graph shows the connection between each of the neurons. This forms the weight matrix. You will notice that there are no threshold values like we saw in previous weight matrices. Threshold values do not apply to the Hopfield neural network, so there is no reason to tuck them into the weight matrix of a Hopfield neural network just like we saw with previous weight matrices. You'll also notice that the connection between neuron 1 and neuron 1 is NA, not applicable. This is because the Hopfield neural network does not connect any neurons to themselves. Because of this, you see a diagonal of NAs. This represents all the connections from that neuron to the same neuron. Hopfield neural networks only accept Boolean values. Because of this, the Boolean values will need to be transformed into bipolar numbers before the Hopfield neural network can work with them. You learned about bipolar numbers in the previous class session. Bipolar numbers are a way that neural networks represent true and false as floating point numbers. We're going to train this Hopfield neural network to recognize 0, 1, 0, 1, and 1, 0, 1, 0. We have to train it to recognize these two. You have no choice. When you train the Hopfield neural network to recognize a binary pattern, it will automatically recognize the inverse of that binary pattern. Here we're going to see how to create a weight matrix that is capable of recognizing these two numbers. When a Hopfield neural network recognizes a number, it returns that number from the output. This is called auto-associative property. And here you see the weight matrix that would be used to recall the patterns that we just mentioned on the Hopfield neural network. You will notice that this is a basic 4x4 matrix. It shows the actual numeric weight values between the various neurons. 
As you will recall, we just mentioned that neurons are not connected to each other, are not connected to themselves on a Hopfield neural network. You can see this by the diagonal of zeros that cuts right through the weight matrix. For example, neuron 1 to neuron 1 is 0, as is neuron 2 to neuron 2. Everything that is connected to itself is a zero. Placing these zeros allows the matrix to be handled normally, even though these values really don't exist. Putting the zeros in simply causes the matrix to behave in such a way as though these values were not there. Let's attempt to recall pattern 0101, or false true, false true. We begin by presenting this to neuron 1. We will only cover neuron 1, calculating the other neurons follows the same pattern. We refer to the grid that we saw before, and we look at neuron 1's connections to all of the other neurons. Its connection to itself is 0, as is consistent with what we described, and its connection to neuron 2 is negative 1, 1 to neuron 3, and so forth. Because we are presenting the neural network with 0, 1, 0, 1, the second and fourth neurons are the ones that will actually fire. It is important to take the weight matrix value for those two neurons and sum them together. That is going to be the output for the first neuron. Here you see the output from the first neuron. You also see the output from the other neurons as well. They are calculated in exactly the same way that the first neuron was calculated. Now that we have the output for each of the neurons, we can get the output for the entire neural network. Because neuron 1 is producing a value of negative 2 that is below 0, which will be a false value. Neuron 2 produces a 1, which is above 0, so that's a true value. Neurons 3 and 4 correspond in the same way. Here we see that the neuron has recognized the pattern because it has repeated the pattern. Now let's see how we got the weight matrix that was used to recall this pattern. First you start with an empty weight matrix as seen here. The first task is to convert 0, 1, 0, 1 to bipolar negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1. This input is then converted into a matrix. We then transpose this matrix and multiply the original matrix by its transposition. This results in the following matrix. This multiplication results in the following matrix. For more information on matrix multiplication or transposition or the other matrix functions that we used in this chapter, refer to class session 2. Multiplication results in this weight matrix. However, we need to set the diagonal to 0 because the matrix values, the neurons, are not connected to themselves. Setting the diagonal to 0 results in this matrix. This matrix is now trained for the pattern that we just presented, which is 0, 1, 0, 1. This training pattern can be added to the existing weight matrix. Because there's no existing weight matrix, recall it was all zeros, this becomes the weight matrix. Using this weight matrix allows you to recall the pattern 0, 1, 0, 1. If you decided to train the Hopfield Neural Network to recognize another pattern, you would get another con contribution training matrix like this. You would add that training matrix to the existing weight matrix. That would reinforce the new pattern that you had trained for onto the existing weight matrix for the existing Hopfield Neural Network. The Hopfield Neural Network is now trained and ready to recall the patterns that we did earlier. This concludes part one of this class session. The next part will show you how to actually implement in C-sharp classes that will create a Hopfield neural network. You will see the classes necessary to create a Hopfield neural network, and later class parts for this class session will show you how to actually create simple examples using the C-sharp classes that we created in this part. We hope you will continue with part two. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.